Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and this is by request. And I wasn't planning on making a video today. I've got some uh, company, but while they're getting ready for the day, I thought I would sneak this one in here. But I've had a lot of interest in this video here, Dendera decoded in Idris' birth 10,000 years ago. And I talked about the jackal-headed and the falcon-headed gods, the souls of Nekem and Pa. And I've had a lot of questions on that, or pay. P-E is how that is spelled. I'm not quite sure of the pronunciation. But that I've had a lot of questions on. And they said, wait a minute, these are the souls of the pre-dynastic rulers. Are you sure about that? How do you know this? Where does this come from? Well, I just thought I would talk about it today because it's pretty important. But the souls of Pei and the Kim, Jackal and Falcon headed gods, these were hugely important to the dynastic rulers of ancient Egypt, the pharaohs, and they are peppered throughout the tombs. Here are the souls of Nekem. In Seti's tomb, the souls of Pei. Souls of Nekem in Seti's tomb, and you get your greatest clue, because they are kneeling and making this gesture here with the arm raised up. This is Seti's tomb, and here you see the row of kneeling jackal-headed gods and the row of falcon-headed gods described as the gods of Pei and Nekem. Here in Ramsey's tomb, he is being guided by the soul of Nekem and the soul of Pei. This is very important. The pharaohs recognize the pre-dynastic rulers in the form of the two oldest gods coming from ancient Egypt. Of course, this was the Sphinx. Anubis was the Sphinx, and Horus was the preeminent god, the sun. But it's clear, the pharaohs of ancient Egypt, such as Ramses I here, they wanted to be guided in the afterlife by the souls of these pre-dynastic kings. They wanted to join the pre-dynastic rulers in the afterlife they are the ones who started what became Egypt. They were immortalized. They were considered gods. But they were actual rulers, it seems, by the way they are depicted by the pharaohs of Egypt. They had souls, just like people have souls. They weren't mythological. They wanted to join these kings' souls, their Ba, in the afterlife. There is a whole list of pre-dynastic rulers, and here in this depiction of the souls of Nekem, there's a whole line of rulers. That totally makes sense. It says on this website, these gods represented the souls of the ancient pre-dynastic rulers of Upper and Lower Egypt, from whom the kings of Egypt were descended. The souls were regarded as powerful protectors and the ancestors of a living monarch and followers of the god Horus. The ancient Egyptians tell us they are descendants of somebody previously living in what we call Egypt today. Now here on this website, this comes from Senroset the first tomb, but here is the soul of Nekem, jackal-headed god kneeling, arm upraised. It says here, the kneeling jackal-headed deity represents one of the souls of Nekem. And then they give the Greek name for it, Hierakonopolis an important cult center in southern Egypt. Their counterparts were the falcon-headed souls of Hedet, the double mounds of Buto, which was located in the northern part of the Egyptian delta. And it says, these divine creatures, whose roots seem to lie at the beginning of Egyptian history, or what became Egyptian history, served as the protective powers representing the northern and southern boundaries of the country, and this suggests in pre-dynastic times that there was a division between the rulers of southern and northern Egypt. Now, does this say anything in the most ancient texts coming from the earliest Egyptians? Well, this is the book coming forth by day. And what does it say, or what does it hint, happened to these rulers a long, long time ago that were taken out, it seems, by something cataclysmic? Is that what this suggests? Well, let me just read. This is of knowing the souls of Pei, and then I'll read of knowing the souls of Nekem. And getting into the souls of Pei here, it says, I, even I, know though ye know it not. Behold Ra, 
gave the city unto him in return for the injury in his eye, for which cause Ra said to Horus, Let me see what is coming to pass in thine eye. And forthwith he looked thereat. Then Ra said to Horus, Look at that black pig. And he looked, and straightway an injury was done unto his eye. Then said Horus unto Ra, Verily my eye seems if it were an eye upon which Sudi had inflicted a blow. And then Ra said to those gods, Place ye him in his chamber, and he shall do well. And then it ends this way. Give me two divine brethren in the city of Pei, and two divine brethren in the city of Neken, who from my body, and who shall be with me in the guise of everlasting judges. Then shall the earth blossom, and thunderclouds and rain be blotted out. And the name of Horus became Herachuef, the prince of his emerald stone. And remember the Greek writers? They don't say that tablets were found coming from a lost history in the land we call Egypt today. They didn't say that there was emerald tablets found, but they did say there was strange glyphs and writing on pillars that were made of emerald. I just thought that was interesting. And the Greek writers write about seeing those, actually. But it says, And the name of Horus became Herachuath, prince of his emerald stone. And this is about the followers of Horus, the pre-dynastic rulers, that the kings of Egypt certainly looked at as real people. They immortalized them, and they put them in their artwork and in their text. Now, of knowing the souls in the ken, the chapter of the, knowing the souls in the ken, the overseer of the palace, the chancellor in chief, knew triumphant, saith, I know the hidden things of the city in the ken. That is to say, the things which the mother of Horus did for him, and how she made her voice go forth over the waters, saying, Speak ye unto me concerning the judgment which is upon me, the path behind you, and let me discover how Ra said, the son of Isis hath perished. And what the mother of Horus did for him, she cried out, saying, Sebek, the lord of the papyrus swamp, shall be brought to us. Sebek fished for them, and he found them, and the mother of Horus made them grow in the places to which they belonged. Then Sebek, the lord of the papyrus swamp, said, I went and found the place where they had passed. With my fingers on the edge of the waters, and I enclosed them in my net, and strong was that net. And said Ra, So then there are fish with the god Sebek, and he had found the hands and arms of Horus for him in the land of fish. And that land became the land of the city of Rima, i.e. fish. And Ra said, A land of the pool, a land of the pool to this net, then were the hands of Horus brought to him at the uncovering of his face at the festivals of the month and a half in the land of Remu. And Ra said, I give the city of Nekem to Horus for the habitations of his two arms and hands, and his face shall be uncovered before his two hands and arms in the city of Nekem. I give unto his power the slaughtered beings who are in them at the festivals of the month and half month. So when people ask me, how do you know these are the souls of the pre-dynastic rulers? Well, the Egyptians tell us this, and the rulers that ruled dynastic Egypt immortalized these kings. These were not mythological figures. The most famous kings of Egypt wanted to, their souls to follow on the way these souls of the pre-dynastic rulers ascended to the afterlife. They immortalized them. They wanted to be like them because they were real rulers of Egypt on a king's list that has dates and descriptions. And we have found tombs. Zahi, Mark Laner, these are not mythological rulers of a mythological time. This is a real time depicted by the ancient Egyptians. They knew 
I'm going to listen to them before I listen to clowns like you. What does history tell me? Seems that ancient law civilization came to what we know as Egypt today about 11,500 years ago, erected some mighty fine monuments and shrines. They were the original builder gods. The text tells us this. They were wiped out, maybe, by a huge cataclysm and flood, maybe 10,000 years ago, the same time they buried Gobekli Tepe. That would make sense with the king's list. And then Egypt, ruled by the followers of Horus in the pre-dynastic times, followed by the dynastic pharaohs. That's what history tells me. Hope you thought this was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.